Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. I'm your host, Deshauna Barber. I am a former Miss USA Army veteran, and I am a full-time motivational speaker. Sour Loss Sweet Lessons is a podcast about self-care, self-love, and self-improvement. I went through it so you don't have to. This is all about Deshauna Barber's lessons, experiences, hurdles, adversities, and the things that I've experienced. I'm hoping that with all of my life experiences, at the end of each episode, you all walk away feeling inspired, strengthened, and encouraged to take on the world and face your hurdles head on. So let's dive right into this very juicy episode, which is what being Miss USA taught me. (laughs) <laughs> and um, really it's what pageantry and the entire culture of pageantry and the crown and what was being Miss USA like and what did it do to evolve me into who Deshauna Barber is today? <laughs> That's the totality of what today's episode is about. So let's dive right into even how did I win Miss USA? So This is a viral video that has gone viral on a few different platforms. So I want to give you all the heads up in case you've heard it again, or in case you're just a fan of mine's or you're a follower of mine and you've heard it before, I apologize. You're just gonna have to hear it again. So I was a employee at Target working a summer position between 2009 and 2010. It was my sophomore year in college and I was folding clothes in the women's department I was in that red shirt and khakis, okay, folding everything back after people tear it up. (laughs) And there was this lady staring at me from across the way. She was like across the aisle in a different area. And she eventually walks up to me. And the first thing she says to me is, were you born in this country? And I was immediately offended. (laughs) I said, yes, I was born in this country. She says, do you have any kids? I said, no, ma'am. She says, are you married? I said, no, ma'am. She's like, how old are you? I said, 19 years old. May I help you find something? trying to figure out what this woman wants. So she says something to me that changes my life forever. She says, you look like you could be the next Miss USA. And I laughed at her hysterically because I'm thinking she's talking about Miss Congeniality, Sandra Bullock pageants. Like I am not a pageant person. I didn't know anything about pageants when I was 19. And I proceeded to tell her that I come from an all military family, ma'am. In two years, I'm going to commission into the army, become an army officer, and I'm going to go active duty, follow the steps and the, the, the trail and the path of my family members, specifically my dad, my mom, my sister, and my brother, who are all army veterans. I said, we don't do pageants where I'm from, lady. And she says, you know, I see something in you, Deshauna. I see something in you. Like, meet me at Starbucks tomorrow and let's have a conversation about it. And I must have been a pretty open-minded 19-year-old because I actually let, met this lady at Starbucks the very next day. She brought this foot-tall stack of pageant books and proceeds to convince me to enter into my very first pageant. What I didn't realize is that the questions that she was asking me were the qualifications necessary to compete for a Miss USA competition and even the the levels under it. So Miss Universe organization is the totality of um, MUO. Miss Universe organization is the total organization and Miss USA falls under it. So of the Miss Universe organization qualifications, you need to be between the ages of 18 and 27 to compete. You need to be a U.S. citizen, you need to be unmarried, and you need not have any kids. That was the qualifications back then. So really, she was asking me those questions because she's a pageant recruiter and she was making sure I was qualified before she proceeded to say something that changed my life forever, right? <laughs> so I competed into my very first state pageant and I lost. I go back the second year, compete in the state competition, and I lose. Go back the third year, compete in the state competition, and lose. Go back the fourth year, compete in the state competition and lose. Go back the fifth year, compete in the state competition and lose. These state competitions are once a year. Go back the fifth year, the sixth year, lose, lose. And finally, on my seventh year and last year of eligibility, I win Miss Washington, D.C., USA, 
and I go on to compete at Miss USA representing Washington, D.C. in Las Vegas at the Miss USA competition. And it was on June 5th, 2016 that I win the prestigious title of Miss USA. And I'm actually crowned the first soldier to win the title of winning Miss USA. So that's really a micro short shortened story of how it all happened. There are some things that happened within there, but one of the main things that happened during that seven year period is, is that just six months before I won Miss Washington DC USA, Leslie Morton is the recruiter that found me in Target that day, passed away from leukemia. And six months after her passing, I won Miss Washington DC USA. And it was a very heartbreaking situation when she passed away. I was destroyed. And it's just so crazy that she saw something in me and didn't live long enough or in the physical form to be able to see this dream come to fruition that she placed in me. So it was a really hard process in terms of winning Miss Washington, D.C. and, of course, winning Miss USA knowing that this person that discovered me years prior was not there to see it in physical form. And I always say in physical form because I believe heavily that people are here in spirit and that when people pass away, I know that they are still our guardian angels and they're seeing everything that we are accomplishing and everything that we're experiencing. So I'm going to constantly, you'll see on the podcast, I'm always going to say here in physical form because I believe heavily that people are here in spirit at all times. So just an FYI. But moving on, so I went on to win Miss USA. And only three months after winning Miss USA, my mother passed away from lung cancer. And I slipped into a deep, dark, 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 dark depression. <laughs> I just learned so much during this time as Miss USA, especially when my mother passed away, especially when Leslie passed away. And I'm going to tell you all deeply the things that I experienced after this break. See you in a sec. Welcome back. All right, so let's dive into what did I learn from being Miss USA? How did being Miss USA change me and shape me? <sighs> Y'all. <clears throat> I feel like my first day as Miss USA was so difficult and it was difficult because when I won, I was just bombarded on social media. As soon as the crown went on my head, it was complete chaos. <laughs> it was complete chaos on social media because I don't feel like in 2016, I will say things have really evolved and have changed for the better as of recently. But in 2016, being the first dark skin Miss USA since Kenya Moore, I don't believe, and by the way, Kenya Moore was crowned in the early 90s, 93 to be specific. I don't believe that because of my darker hue and because of my very Afrocentric features, I represented the type of black woman that people wanted representing Miss USA. That's what I believe. I think that it was not only racism, but it's colorism, if anything. That's just what I think. And that's what I experienced because all the comments were about me being dark skinned. They weren't necessarily saying, no, not a black woman. No, not a black woman. It was more so saying she's so dark and ugly. Like dark was just a common word that was used to describe me. So I can only assume that if you're constantly mentioning dark, then it's Really, your problem is that I'm dark skinned and not necessarily the fact that I'm black. At least a dozen black women have won Miss USA, but very rarely are they dark skinned. I believe even to this day, it's just me and Kenya Moore. That's it. Um, and a couple have toted the line of being very caramel, caramel and like kind of in between, but definitely darkest are myself and Kenya Moore. And 
my social media just ripped me to shreds. And I want to say that while I was heartbroken, and I mean shattered after spending seven years fighting and working and striving for this goal that this day did not feel as joyous as I would like. I saw so many cheerleaders as well. If I have to look at the positive, because like I said, this is sour loss, sweet lessons. It's about the good, the bad, the happy, the sad, the up, the down. The bad was that, gosh, people were so brutal. But the good is that I saw people in the comments come out in Calvary style drones, like ready to fight for my honor. The amount of bad comments followed by people ripping other people to shreds for the audacity of being racist and colorist in my comments. I saw so many people that really went to bat for me. So I really appreciated the cheerleaders that supported me throughout my reign. I mean, it was so uplifting to know that although everyone is not necessarily in support of my reign, I'm not necessarily doing this for everyone. I realized that there's so many people in the world, especially little black girls that feel so underrepresented in the pageant community and in the beauty space, just to be the representation for them, I felt like I needed to keep going. And that was my walk-in day, right? So I'm walking in and I'm walking into being thrashed and I'm realizing that, okay, this rain is not for everyone. <laughs> but for the ones that it is for, I have to keep going. I have to keep fighting. But what people didn't realize is that the moment that I landed in Las Vegas, the day before my mom had been placed on hospice. So the doctor called myself and my siblings and was saying to my siblings that, you know, your mom's going to hospice and she's going into end of life care. And I just kept saying, well, how long does she have? Like, what, what? And he just kept saying, I, I can't give you a time frame. So I was nervous to even fly to Miss USA. I was planning on not going. I called my coach. Her name is Jules. She's with PR Pageant Coaches and she's amazing. And I called her and I said, hey, my mom just got placed in hospice. I'm not going to Miss USA. Y'all are going to have to call the first runner up and she's going to have to go in my place because I can't go because I don't know how long my mom has and it doesn't make sense for me to go. And although my mom was telling me to keep going and my coach was like, no, 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 no. Your mom would want you to do this. Your mom would want you to compete. And I said, that's true. That's fair. So I went and my mom ended up living for another three months and then she passed away on August 20th. And What's interesting about her passing away is that I was so heartbroken, but at the same time, I thought to myself, maybe this means that the social media bashing will stop. Maybe this means that people will go lighter on me and give me some space to grieve because they know that I'm going through like the hardest experience in my life. And that's absolutely not what happened. <laughs> Absolutely not what happened. People didn't care. People didn't care. I mean, I felt no lighter of harassment and social media bullying when she passed away than I did the first day. And I went and P I could probably pop up some photos if we can. But if you all see how thin I was when I was Miss USA, I was not eating because I had no appetite. I had so many appearances every week. I'm on a plane every week. I'm somewhere. So I was grieving and traveling and just trying my hardest to hang on for dear life and make it through this year and not throw in the towel. And it really goes to show that people genuinely don't know what you're going through and I didn't feel the need to come out and tell people what I was going through because I feel like if you have any level of humanity in you, you'll know that my mom passed away. 
and that maybe putting this monkey emoji on my Instagram is really insensitive to do. That's just what I thought that people would think in their minds, but it's just not what people thought in their minds. People are so wrapped up in themselves and people are filled with so much hate that they really just don't care. And I want to lead with a lesson before I get into the next part of this is that leaning on your tribe and leaning on your cheerleaders and leading on your biggest support system is the absolute best thing that you can do in times of hardship. And that's exactly what I did. I stopped looking at comments after a while. I stopped reading messages after a while. I just stopped completely looking at the opinions of other people during my year. And I focused 1000% on leaning on the people that I know was loving the fact that I was Miss USA and loving the fact that my year had even come to fruition because so many people that are in my cheerleading space knew the seven year process that I had been through to get to where I was. And I just had to learn to block out the noise because if I didn't, I just don't know if my mental health could have taken anymore. So for my own safety and safeguard of my health, I stopped reading comments <laughs> and I started focusing on the people that really did love my year and loved myself as the queen that year. So, and then we get to the Miss Universe competition. I will tell you all about that after this break. See you soon. Welcome back. All right. So Miss Universe. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell y'all about Miss Universe. I had like the greatest three and a half weeks of my life at Miss Universe. Not because I was competing for Miss Universe necessarily, but because of the women that I got to meet in Manila, Philippines. Because of the energy of the Filipino community. To this day, one of my favorite countries is the Philippines. Because when you get there, these people are so loving and sweet and incredible. And when you go to different like public locations, you have to wear your sash. They kept saying, USA, USA, because it has USA across my chest. <laughs> so they kept saying USA instead of USA, but I was just like, hi, you know just the most, and it'll make me cry. <laughs> it's just the most incredible people. I'm not going to crown this podcast, y'all. And I was going through the hardest experience of my life um, when I got there because I had just lost my mom and I didn't even want to go to universe. I was grieving like I was in a deep, dark depression and I was very, very, very skinny and I'm already a naturally skinny person. So even losing five or 10 pounds on my body is a lot of weight. And I was like, I couldn't get through the night without, and you know, with the Philippines, I had to really sober up. <laughs> You know, I could say all this now because I'm not Miss USA anymore. But when I tell you, I really think I had experienced true alcoholism. Like I was a, I would say I was probably on the border of being an alcoholic as Miss USA. I'm not even going to lie. I couldn't go to sleep without having a few glasses of wine, without having a few beers. Like I just needed a little bit of a buzz. I was a smoker. Ooh, I used to smoke. Wow. This is the first time I'm telling people this. I smoked black and mild, y'all, like the little cigars. And I was smoking and I was drinking and that's how I got through the day. And I was going through a lot. And by the time I got to universe, they weren't serving us alcohol. So I had no choice but to, to sober up. <laughs> um, but I'm grateful 
to the Filipino community. And I'm most importantly and grateful to my roommate, Miss Miss Curacao. Chanel was my roommate. And we were stuck in this very small room for three and a half weeks. And she kept me so uplifted. There were nights where I'd be crying, like, because I was just missing my mom. And she would hug me and she would, um, (sighs) she would tell me it was going to be okay. And she was just the sweetest person. So when people saw me, when I finally got on the stage, what people didn't realize is one, well, people probably did realize, but just didn't care. (laughs) But one, I was grieving and I was sad and I was heartbroken and I barely made it to the Philippines, y'all. Like I barely made it. I barely made it to Manila because I was just stressed and depressed and trying to get through the day. And I made it through because of the Filipino community, because of the 86 women I got to compete against at Miss Universe, because of my amazing roommate, Miss Curacao. Um, And yeah, by the time I got on the stage, I was exhausted. What people didn't realize is that because it was airing in the United States of America, we were on the stage at like three o'clock in the morning. So I was exhausted. We were in different time zones. Like it was just, I was tired. And I really just wanted to go home. Like I really wanted it to be over. So a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, Deshauna, like at Miss USA, I just felt it. I felt it. Like I felt the energy, but at Universe, I didn't feel it. And it's like at USA, my mom was still living. Like she was watching this. I was doing it for her. I want it for her. By the time I got to Universe, she had passed away and I was just barely hanging on by strings. I was depressed. I was grieving. I was mourning. And it took a lot to be there. And I did the best that I could. I did the best that I could. And for my own mental health, I could not allow the pressure to really to really jog me down. Or I just don't know if I could have taken much more, to be honest. So I did the best that I could, I will say. And I leave the Miss Universe competition and I go home and I'm proud of myself. I'm proud. I'm like, oh gosh, you know, like, thank you God for getting me through this. Thank you for helping me. And, you know, I've only got four more months and I can uh, really finish this year out with a bang. And again, I'm thinking that people are going to let loose, like they're going to let go of the the chains of Bash and Deshauna. <laughs> and that, you know, I'm trying to keep my lash on. So I placed top nine out of 86 countries. And I was incredibly proud of that. And I went home very thankful for that placement and thankful that I was able to even make it through that experience. And I was really proud. But I can't negate the fact that if it wasn't for my roommate, if it wasn't for the love of the Filipino country itself and the people within it, if it wasn't for Miss Malaysia, Miss Philippines, Miss Thailand, like some of my closest, closest friends from the competition, I just don't know if I would have really made it through the way that I did. So I was really grateful Um, But when I got home, you know, those reaction videos came out and those response videos. And I started seeing all these videos of people saying that I did not deserve to compete, not only did not deserve to compete, but that how did she even place this and that? There were even videos from former Miss USA's saying that I should not have placed and that I was sash factor, which was very shocking to me and very hurtful. And let me say this. When I said that there were people saying I was sash factor for the people that aren't pageant people, sash factor means that you only placed because of the country on your sash. So they're saying that because you're USA, that's why you placed. So that's just an FYI on what sash factor is. Um, So I was very hurt by that. And I was very hurt by even former Miss USA's that were contributing to the bashing of Deshauna and them literally 
and really everyone completely forgetting that I barely made it to the Philippines. I barely made it to the Miss Universe competition. I was in a deep, dark depression after losing my mother. And there were so many times in which I just did not know if I could take any more during that year. And just the lack of sensitivity and the lack of empathy that I received from some of the people in the pageant community, some of the former title holders, I was just in complete shock at the complete disregard for the amount of energy and perseverance it took me to get on that plane and even continue through my reign. So that was a real Debbie Downer during the year. And it just made the year really tough. Like I, I want, you, you would think that being Miss USA would be the greatest year of your life, but because it aligned completely with my mother passing away and because of the bullying and, and all of that, I just don't know if I would say that it was the greatest year. And it's not because the title is not worthy of being awesome. It's just because of the circumstances that came with the title and the circumstances that came with my life that year where the alignment was just a struggle. But what I am grateful for is the Miss Universe staff, the Miss Universe organization staff. They were so incredible to me. They were so sweet to me. And the moments in which they wanted to give me a break, I just kept telling them, no, I don't need a break. Let's keep going. And that was because I was just practicing avoidance. I was like, maybe if I just continue working, continue diving into this year, maybe the pain will ease up and it just never did. And the healthier decision would have been for me to take a break. Even if it's a month off, they were willing to give that to me. It was me that said, no, mm, but I wish I would have taken a break and took time to really have a healthy grieving process. And that's just not what happened. I didn't want, I just didn't want to do that. And I feel like that was a huge mistake. Literally the day after the funeral, I was back in New York City at appearances. It was a terrible decision. So I finish out my year as Miss USA and I go on to become a motivational speaker. <laughs> And I'm grateful to the crown and to the year and to the reign and to um, WME IMG Endeavor for taking me on into their speakers bureau to become a motivational speaker. And I'm grateful to the Miss Universe organization for loving on me the entire year. And there were so many positives that came out of it. There were so many amazing relationships that came out of it. Like I know that there were positives during that year, but there were some negatives, to, negatives with it as well. And it was tough. <laughs> so what did Miss USA do to evolve me? For the hundred people that don't like you, there's probably about 500 that do. That a lot of our cheerleaders are silent. And the people that hate you the most are the loudest. That's what I realized. And that I had more people supportive of my reign than people that weren't. And that makes me super happy about the year and my experience. I also learned just the power of perseverance, that it all pays off in the end and that a lot of our pain and our struggles are very much temporary or at least at the height of it when it's the worst, that worst part of the experience is very temporary and that sometimes it kind of eases up and to not allow the peak of your pain to be the illustration of the rest of your life, that this is temporary. And what I realized is that, yeah, Deshana, this is one year. You have so much life that's going to happen after that. It was really my dad that told me that. He's like, you know, you have so much life that's going to happen after this. Don't let this one year rip you to shreds. And I didn't. And I moved on and became just a successful motivational speaker that uses my story to be able to inspire and strengthen and encourage people around me. I'm so grateful for the lessons that I learned. And I also learned from being Miss USA, I learned just how strong I am. 
I am such a strong person and I am built for this, honey. I can take it. And no matter how many times life tried to knock me down, I figured out a way to get back up. And that sometimes the biggest benefit of these high level moments in your life, you don't feel the benefit in the moment. Like I don't feel the, I didn't feel the benefits of being Miss USA while I was Miss USA. I felt the benefits of it afterwards in the platform that I built, in the credibility that I built, in the company that I built, and the relationships, the positive relationships that came out of it. So Miss USA did change me for the better. And I'm so grateful for the crown and for the opportunity. And I hope that people know that regardless of other people's opinions, you are absolutely deserving and worthy of every good thing that happens to you in your life. You are worthy and you can't let people make you feel as though you don't deserve something. And that's what I had to do as Miss USA. It was so many people in my year saying, no, 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 not Deshauna, not Deshauna, not Deshauna. And I had to turn my blinders on and hit the mute button on all the noise around me and say, Deshauna, you're so deserving of this. And don't expect everybody to think that, but it doesn't mean that you're less deserving. Not everyone has to agree with the places that you occupy, but it doesn't mean you don't deserve the opportunity to occupy these spaces merely because someone doesn't believe you deserve it. Oftentimes they're battling with their own confidence and their own issues within themselves to where they feel the need to get on social media and bash another person on purpose. It is a shame and it is sad. So that year was a year. It was a year, but I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And it could have been anyone else, but they chose me. And I also want to say that some of the greatest relationships on the planet came out of the Miss USA class of 2016, the sweet 16. I've ripped and raved about my Miss Universe experience, but honey, my Miss USA experience, the women that I compete against, some of which are some of my best friends to this day, one of my bridesmaids is someone I compete against at Miss USA. That's how amazing these women are and how much they impacted my life because I am still friends with almost all of them to this day. It's just a rare moment. And truly, I feel like sisterhood is represented in my Miss USA class and my Miss Universe class. Those are where my sisters are is in those two categories. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. So what's the lesson? Ha! Ah, believe in yourself, persist. Don't look for validation from other people's opinions. You deserve everything that is offered to you. And keep striving. And it's all going to work out. Thank you all so much for joining me on this episode. This is a real beginning of a long list of lessons and moments and experiences that I am so excited to share with you all. So please hit that subscribe button, like this episode, share this episode, and leave a review. Tell me how you feel about it. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Yay Networks.